The 2019 Maserati Ghibli is marketed as an Italian sophisticated luxury sedan, but a lot of people complain that it has low build quality and it actually borrows a lot of its parts from Chrysler products. So is this just an expensive rebranded Chrysler 300 or is it a real luxury sedan? That's what we're going to find out in this video. The Ghibli comes with three different powertrain options here in the US. The base model comes with a 3 liter turbocharged V6 engine which produces 345 horsepower. Opt for the Ghibli S and you're going to get a 3 liter twin turbocharged V6 with 424 horsepower. But if that's still not enough performance for you, Maserati also offers the Ghibli SQ4 which is an all wheel drive version. Maserati says that the fastest version of the Ghibli, the SQ4, can go 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds and reach a top speed of 178 miles per hour. On paper, that might look pretty impressive, but in real life, you got to remember this is a luxury car, not a sports car. That has a base curb weight of right around 4,000 pounds, so maybe it goes fast in a straight line, but it probably handles like a boat going around turns. If you want sporty, you might want to opt for the Maserati Gran Turismo instead. So the powertrain on a Maserati Ghibli does perform a little bit better than your average Chrysler. But what about the exterior? Is that good as well? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, it definitely doesn't look like a Chrysler to me. For 2018, the front fascia area of the Maserati Ghibli was updated to look a lot smoother and more modern, but it still retains that same Maserati style chrome slat grille, which looks very, very cool. And you can see it across all the models on their lineup. Definitely lends the brand a uniform look across the entire lineup. It kind of looks smooth and modern, but also pretty aggressive. I definitely do like the front end of this car, and the side profile is pretty nice as well. You can get 19, 20, or 21 inch rims. Those are all the different options. Also comes with Brembo brakes as standard and adaptive dampers with the Maserati Skyhook technology. Now, the rear of the car is where things go maybe a little bit not quite as good, in my opinion. It looks basically the same as it did 20 years ago just doesn't have a very smooth modern look to me still kind of has a boxy look even with the quad chrome exhaust tips adding some nice contrast it's just not a smooth design back there and even on the side of the car just where the rear trunk comes in kind of messing with the proportions and really ruins the look of the car for me but that's just my personal opinion there are a lot of people who love the looks of this car and maserati does do a great job with their exterior but what about the interior i think it's time we check that out because it is really cold out here so normally I would do this section of the review inside the dealership in the car so I'd show you guys everything I was talking about, just point to it and it'd be right there. But as I was inside the dealership feeling around the interior, warming up a little bit and just checking things out in general, I realized the things I had to say about the interior weren't necessarily things I wanted to say in front of all the dealership employees. Because unfortunately as much as I want to love this car, the interior is very, very underwhelming. I'm not very familiar with Chrysler products, but people always complain that this is basically just a rebatched Chrysler, and honestly, that's what the interior felt like. It comes with leather and available carbon fiber or wood veneer accents, but everything just felt really low quality. It was not a soft leather, and there was a lot of hard plastics everywhere. The build quality, honestly, was not as good as you would expect from a Maserati. It wasn't as bad as a Chrysler would be, but it just wasn't that great. There were definitely some panel gaps, lots of lots of cheap plastics and just things that didn't fit together quite right and it's a great design it comes with an 8.4 inch touchscreen infotainment system a 7 inch tft screen on the gauge cluster and 12-way power adjustable seats but overall just as far as quality goes it's not the type of luxury you would expect from a car with an msrp of over seventy thousand dollars so there you go guys my review of the new maserati ghibli i kept it short and sweet because honestly i'm not that impressed with the car at least not as much as i was with the maserati levante and the gran turismo that i reviewed a few months ago both of which you can check out right there great reviews but as always guys if you enjoyed this video make sure to leave it a thumbs up comment your thoughts below and go ahead and check out my channel because i've got a ton of exotic supercar hypercar and luxury car reviews up starting to subscribe and thanks for watching